Well, hello there, ladies and gents. I'm Tammy Sapniewski, your crypto queen. Thank you so much for popping by my channel. Remember, this is not financial advice strictly for entertainment purposes only, but to remind you to only buy on that red candle. I see a lot of the comments in the comment section, and I get it. A lot of you are scared because I look at the charts here, not the charts, but just the numbers, and I can see all of the red candles. I get that. That can be terrifying, especially if you're in a situation where you've put your money into cryptocurrency hoping to make a little bit of money so that you could take it out right away. And now this, what's happening, what's going on? And maybe you're a little freaked out. Perhaps you've even entered into some positions and you're like, okay, this is my stop loss area. I, I probably should sell out here. I get that. I understand that. And I'm not talking you out of anything that you want to do. That's your money. You do what you want to do with your money. I'm just relaying to you like how I'm handling this particular situation. I'm actually buying. This is the time to buy. How many times have we said, oh, I wish I had gotten into this coin earlier. I wish I could have gotten Altura at a dime. Oh, I wish have, I could have gotten to crypto.com when it was down in the 40 cent area. Guess what? All of that is so significantly down. This is the time to buy. I don't mean to sound hokey. With the crypto.com slogan, fortune favors the brave, fortis fortuna adeowat, but it's very true. It is so very true. When you look at all of the people who have ever written books about money, financial advisors, they always say the same thing. Buy when other people are scared and sell when everybody else is getting greedy. That's how you make money. This is the time to get in. Now, I I'm not telling you to empty your bank accounts and put it all into cryptocurrency. I'm not saying that. As a matter of fact, I was adding to a lot of my other positions. I've since pumped the brakes a little bit. I'm slowing down because I want to see where the bottom is. Where is the bottom? I don't know. We're going to find out though, right? I mean, we could judge each and every token or coin individually, see where their different areas of support are, which by the way, is exactly what you should be doing. If you're looking to sell a coin or a token that you own, you should be investigating it saying, okay, oh, I know I put a stop loss at this particular area, but does it make sense now? I've held on this long, is the bottom near? Let's go on over to coin market cap because I wanna take a quick peek over at Bitcoin because the market really does follow Bitcoin. And when we come down to the Bitcoin chart, let me just go on the one year tab. I wanna see what last year this time looked like. Oh, and what do you know? There's a huge valley there from January the 1st to January 11th very cyclical. But more importantly, after January, look what happens in February. As we can see with Bitcoin, this is not unusual. As I hold this up, you see the purple candles. That's sales. Those are people that are selling. But the green candles, that's people that are buying. Who do you think is buying? Honestly, who do you think is buying Bitcoin right now? It's people with money. Do you think those people would be buying right now if they thought there was a chance that Bitcoin was going to go down to 25 or 30,000? I don't think so. So if Bitcoin continues with this downward trend, we could see the next area of support, which is like 37, 38,000. After that is the 33,000 mark. I don't think it's gonna touch 33, but I, I don't know. I'm just saying that's my personal belief. I think we might touch on that 38,000 level and then we'll see from there. I think, listen, historically speaking, the markets are always bad in January. Do you know why? It's the month after the holiday when everybody has to start paying their bills that they racked up during the holiday season. They have to pay off the Christmas presents, they bought things, they probably overextended themselves. They need cash, they need money. So the first thing that they start doing is pulling from areas of where they don't need it from. And cryptocurrency is one of those areas where if the husband put five G's into the crypto market, the wife's like, we need stuff. We need money. And he's like, well, we, we need to just budget. I don't, we don't have it. She's like, oh no, we absolutely have it. I know you've got that crypto stuff. Sell some of that and give it to mama. You know, that's happening. I'm telling you that's happening. I get it. We can't just look at one chart and go off of that. So let's take a look at another one. Let's go over to the Ethereum one year chart and see what we have here. Oh, and won't you look at that? Most of January, it was in the red. In February, she was on the rise. Still, come on, two charts, that's all, that's not enough. Let's go to Zcash. And look at that, the majority of January in the red, the beginning of February, on the rise. Let's check out ADA. 
Cardano. We pull up the one year for Cardano. Let's see what it says. Okay, so down in early January for Cardano. Not that it was red, but it was just accumulating very flat for January. Then all of a sudden in February, she skyrockets. And, uh, you know, just to cover ourselves here, let's do the Binance coin. So we go down to BNB, we pull up the one-year chart, and oh, won't you look at that. January, not that it was very red, but it looked like just an area of accumulation ups and downs throughout that certain period. But in early February, she rises. Do you see the trend here? This is every January. Are you kidding me? Come on, you still want to see one more coin? All right, well, let's pull up the last one. Let's pull up Avalanche. Oh, and look at January for Avalanche. Not stellar, not great. In January, it was six bucks. By February, it was 55 bucks. I'm not psychic. I'm not Alison Dubois. I'm not the amazing Kreskin. I'm just me. I'm just going off of what I have for historical data. And historically, we can see that January stink up the place and that February things come booming back and I want to be the person that was smart enough to buy when it was low and sell when it gets very high. That's what I want to do for some coins and tokens. There's other tokens that I'm going to be hodling for the very, very long run, like VVS token. And like I said, I'm not going to go crazy with buying right now because I want to see, you know, I'm pumping the brakes. I just want to see where the absolute bottom is going to be for certain tokens. I did pick up more crow today at 46 cents, but what if she falls down to 40 cents or 42 cents? I don't want to miss out on that. I don't want to spend all of the liquid cash that I have in that particular area. That's why you should never buy one particular coin or token in one big buy at a time. Hold it. She could dip tomorrow. She could dip more two days later. You don't know. So never buy everything all at once. Do what's right for you. I'm not saying for you to hold on to your stuff. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just letting you know how I'm doing it. And I, you know, fingers crossed, come February, your girl will be very happy. And of course, I'll keep you posted. I'll let you know what's going on because I'm sure you're going to be tuned in to see what happens. But until then, I thank you so very much, everyone that comes to my channel and watches my videos. I greatly appreciate you. And until next time, please try to only buy on those red candles and take care.